Hey everyone, it's Mac with Momentum, and today we're gonna to talk about how to create and edit Google Display ads. So those are ads on other Google Display networks, like other websites, um, YouTube, Gmail, applications, things like that. So I'm gonna walk through the details, how to set up the ads, how to set them up for success based on targeting, audiences, locations, how to create the ads, and how to make those ads work for you to be more successful. So let's start with logging into Google AdWords. You go ads.google.com. From there, you're going to have your account and your campaigns. Uh, we're in the new Google Ads dashboard as of like early 2018. They switched over to the new ads account, the new um, you know, interface. It's a little more complex. However, within the last year, Google Ads and the Display Network, in my opinion, got a lot better from the targeting and the reach and the ad creation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the account for, I usually just like to use my test account uh, for the one company that I run called Phone Repair Philly. You know, it's a local small business. So what you'll do is, if you have a manager account, just choose your account. If you're just a business owner, just log into your ads.google. From here, you'll see campaigns on the far left. You can go to any type of campaign by name or campaign type. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new display campaign. And before we get into that, um, you know, obviously pulling up the account, choose your campaign, but before we get into that, let's talk about how and why you should use the Google Ads display network. Typically, I only use the display network for remarketing or placement advertising, which means a placement, you could actually choose what specific websites or YouTube videos you want your ad to go on. If you go really broad and targeting based on interests or keywords or audiences or intent, you're gonna get Google's suggestions based on other people's websites and how Google thinks people use these websites and use the internet. And in my opinion, it's just a great waste of money. So unless you're into branding, brand building, awareness, impressions, and general traffic, it's not good for you. If you have a small local business, it's a terrible idea, in, in my opinion. So I'm gonna actually show you an example of setting this up um, for a small local service business. We're usually a lead generation company. So really, if you're trying to drive leads, it's usually very Google search intent based, people searching on Google. You're not gonna get much luck or much traffic on the display network. However, if you're like Coke or Nike or you know any of these big brands, you could use the display network for brand building and awareness. So let's jump into a campaign. Uh, we're gonna go to campaigns, new campaign, choose a campaign type. Sales and leads, not so good for display. Um, product and brand consideration, definitely. Website traffic, yes. Awareness and reach, yes. I usually go for traffic, and then you choose the display network. There's this thing called smart campaigns now. Probably another good way for Google to waste your money, but it allows you to, it does a lot of the work for you, it does a lot of the guessing for you, so it's easier. I traditionally go with the, the standard display, and then you just want to add your website right here. Funparacular.com would be the website. Uh, you can change the actual final URL later. For the campaign name, I usually you, you usually create campaigns based on the, the targeting and the locations and also definitely the budget. So let's say you just want to do, a, I'll call this test, a local 10 miles um, intent campaign. And we'll call this responsive too because I'm going to show you how to create responsive ads. Uh, if you're a local business, definitely choose your local area. You could actually go in advanced and choose radius targeting, which is pretty cool. So I could do 19123. Uh, actually, I'll choose. You can choose Google My Business. This is kind of new. You can actually choose your Google My Business, target a 20 mile radius around that. Um, so it did it right here. Or it was supposed to at least. Save that. Uh, from there, choose languages, English, you know, English speaking, clicks. I'm going to go based off clicks and traffic. I'm going to automatically maximize clicks and display costs a lot less than search. So if you're paying, you know, I usually say it's a tenth of the cost. So if you're paying like $3 a click for search, I'd go about 30 cents on display. It's, it's competition based. Maximum CPC, there we go. Uh, budget. I'm just gonna go super low budget, you know, just based for this this you know tutorial. I wouldn't spend much. I'd start small and scale up if that's how you want to do it. 
Um, you can choose the schedule, you can choose ad rotation, you know, probably best performing ads, start and end dates. Like if you just, if you don't want to forget about it and you want to, to do a test or have it stop or run a certain campaign for a promotion, do a start and end date. Devices, you get a lot of bad clicks on mobile and a lot of bad mobile experiences. I typically just do computers, sometimes tablets. We'll keep all of them here, especially if it's people cracking their mobile devices. Um, frequency capping, I always frequency cap. I don't want to bombard people with the same, ad, same message all the time. Camping URL options, this is more so for tracking. And we're getting into, into the weeds a little bit, but this is all within the campaign settings with just step number three. A lot of things are structured and set up at the settings level of the campaign. There are certain tracking you know, metrics you can put in place. This is one of the templates I like to use so you can see which actual ad and placement converts. Um, I'll put that in the notes of the YouTube channel or the YouTube uh, video. Dynamic is more so for a data feed using like e-commerce and like shopping ads. Content exclusions, this is very important. If you're watching, do not have a broad net, especially in Google, uh, Google Display. It will literally drive you insane and waste all your money. I've been there, I've seen it. Just at my time with Google, like watching all these clients spend a lot of money um, on you know, getting their ads clicked for sensitive content. Uh, and you, for some of the campaigns, you can actually um, break this out based on content targeting by, um, it's called targeting expansion and intent. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. However, unless you have like something that's super controversial, take all of this stuff off, you know, exclude all of this because it's all bad clicks. It's all bad traffic. Even content not yet labeled as bad. Like you just want like more popular news or media based content or customer intent, audience intent content. Ad group name. This is actually, so you create a bucket within the campaign and you can have different ad groups. We're just going to name the ad group based on the targeting that we use. So I'm going to use demo demographics plus intent plus keywords. Um, so this is like, you know, it's going to be YouTube videos and Gmail and um, websites talking about, you know, for technology, but also talking about like, you know, devices and phone repair. You can get ideas from uh, Google, which these have gotten a lot better based on their new audiences category within the intent. So it's auto-created Mobile phone repair services. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, and we're going to choose a couple within here. You really don't need to go much further than this. Um, typically, Google likes to give you a, an estimate. I wish I had it over here. I think my targeting is too, too small based on the radius and um, the geolocation. Um, however, it usually gives you some sort of estimate over here for your reach, which is great. So we're going to use all these different intent um, Oh, intent options. We'll go down here, Samsung. Uh, we'll stick with that. Uh, that is audience and demographics. We're gonna go down here. I don't think we're gonna have too many older people we want coming in or a, you know lower income level. So choose your demographics. Then we can go with keywords. So this is called layered targeting. So you can choose phone repair, um, Apple, iOS, iPhone, Samsung. This is just layered targeting, so making sure that we're getting the right people. And you can put in your domain over here for keywords and then just pull a bunch of keyword options. More keywords you add, more interest uh, demographics, all that stuff is going to increase your reach. Sorry that we don't have that. One other thing, um, make sure in the settings here, keyword setting, uh, you want to show ads only to people on the websites and apps related to these keywords. Um, nothing, uh, don't show it to people likely on pages with those keywords. Um, you need to be very specific. And then content targeting, you can actually pick certain topics or placements. I would usually do those in their own ad groups or their own campaigns. You can do an added reach if you want to reach more people. It basically is like Facebook lookalike audiences. I do not recommend it. And then you're going to create your ad. This is where you actually can create a new responsive ad. So this is basically uploading different pieces of content um, for like images or ads and then putting it together so that it can reach as many potential placements and, and uh, as many 
different media options available. So for instance, we're going to create our own ad. And one thing I like to do is so we can track the ads um, is go to GA Dev Tools. And what you'll do is you actually put your domain, copy that, make sure you have HTTPS, paste it over into the URL. I'm gonna go Google, display, and then for the campaign name, I actually just use the uh, ad group name, so we're gonna do, or the campaign name, we'll just do test in this case. But this is how you can track within uh, analytics where your traffic's coming from from Google and how they're using the website. We'll go back over here, we're gonna paste that URL. Then what you need to do to create the uh, actual ads themselves, the responsive ads, you need to scan your website or upload images or use stock images. So we'll start by scanning the website because you're going to need the logo and you're going to need the content images. So let's take a look here. Um, and I know we're pretty far into this video, but it's, it's really in-depth showing you how to create the ads and the campaigns for display. Uh, it can be pretty tough to do it on your own. Here is, oh, we don't want that as an image. Here's the logo. I pulled it from the website. We're going to use, okay, that didn't pull it correctly. We'll scan the Facebook and the Twitter too. This is a new feature. If Facebook knows your your inst, uh, your Facebook. I'm sorry. If Google understands what your Facebook is or Twitter is, it can pull the content from there. It's really neat. Um, and then we're gonna do. Let's get the. Uh, we'll get some sort of vertical logo or horizontal. Let's pull that right here. Not that one. Continue. So now we've got the logo content. <clears throat> what we can do next is use the image content. So you can just use. Um, images that you already have online such as me fixing a phone and it wants landscape and square images something that catches people's attention is really good to use uh, we'll also use some image ads here all right and you can also use stock images so we'll search and see if it has anything available for us it's usually better, honestly, than anything that you could have yourself. So let's go with this one. And it, sh it says Shutterstock because they're partnered with Facebook and Google. Um, but it's not going to say that once your ad goes live. Um, let's go with Cracked Phone. And I'll sort of wrap this up here. This is a good one to get people's attention. And this one, we'll leave it with that. So you're gonna save these. You can also upload any logos or images or use any ones that you already have online. We're gonna save those. So now we have enough images and it's gonna tell you your ad strength based on your images, how many images, headlines, and descriptions you have. This is dynamic. This means it takes what Google recommends being like the optimal amount of images and headlines and combines that into the ad itself. You can even upload videos to be part of this. So I'll see if I have a good uh, video. If you have a video, make sure you have it on YouTube because that's where it's going to pull the content from. Uh, we've got a cool promo video here, so we'll use that one. And then you add five headlines, five descriptions, and your business name, and you're pretty much done. So we'll say, call phone repair Philly. I'll have another one. Let's say, cracked phone screen, question mark need a phone repair question mark fix your phone today and whatever might get people's attention cracked phone repair in 15 minutes long headline you know call phone repair and just oops add stuff that has a lot of your keywords and a lot of intent and calls to action in it to fix your phone Number one, sorry, repair service reactor, call today, need to fix your crack phone again, call us for a quote, and you want to use as many as possible, so it gives you five of each. Uh, let's see, phone repair Philly is licensed, trained. Certified. So I got some typos in here, it's always fun.
fix that cracked cell phone today in minutes. Last one last call phone. You can't use excessive capitalization or quotations or anything unusual. Then just add your phone name. Or I'm sorry, add your business name. And that'll all dynamically populate into the ad. Uh, right now, Google Display is a little glitchy with their mockups. But right here, you can see the ad and what it would look like in the display network with the video combined with the logo and call to action. Really neat stuff. Uh, what you can also do is we already added the ad URL options at the campaign level, so we're going to add call to, um, call to action text, get a quote. And then here, you, it dynamically propagates these potential ads. If you want to show somebody or show a potential customer, you can screenshot these. You can see what it looks like on the display network, on mobile, YouTube network on mobile, Gmail on mobile, and then you can also see what it looks like on desktop. And it, it dynamically is going to insert all these different options based on your your images, your logos, your text. So, and then you can even full screen it, which we'll do that here. We're just about done. Thanks for everybody for watching so far. It's a quick 30 minute or 20 minute breakdown on how to create these ads. So there's desktop. See, look, it's Google's messing up right now. Um, but you can get an idea of what these are going to look like on these different platforms. You've done all the hard work. The only other thing you're uh, going to want to do is ad placement um, exclusion, specifically for mobile apps. So you have to um, manually do that after you create this campaign. So we're gonna add to the ad group. We've got everything set up here. There's usually an estimate if you're going for something more broad. We're gonna create the campaign and you're all set. So just to recap, you're gonna log into Google, create a campaign, choose your goals, choose display, set up your campaign settings, set up your ad group, set up your targeting and bidding, create the ads, upload all your dynamic content, and then you are good to go. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, you know, If you ever need any help, feel free to message us. I'll put a couple links in, in the uh, YouTube and also on our social medias. Uh, once again, I'm Mac with Momentum. Thanks for watching another Google uh, tutorial and a Momentum Monday. Mash that subscribe button and uh, talk to you soon.